So there's a lot of talk around the NFL, as we know. The draft uh, happened over the weekend, I believe. Uh, um, late week to the late, weekend, yeah. Late week to the weekend. It just goes on for so many days, yeah. man. It's hard to keep up. Uh, you were busy, because you were in Washington, keeping yourself busy, running around with marches. How many times did you hear, whose revolution is it? <laughs> How many times did you hear? <laughs> <laughs> I was even there and I heard it. Um, but anyway, the, the purpose of this clip is to talk about um, Bridgewater, Teddy Bridgewater. Um, so he had a rough go at it last year, a lot of uh, potential coming in from the uh, mm -hmm. from preseason, injured himself. And now uh, it's came in an ES ESPN report that the Vikings are likely to pass on picking up Bridgewater's fifth year option for 2018, a decision that has to be made no later than tomorrow, I believe, when this yeah. clip goes up May yeah. 2nd. So there's a possibility, JR, that Bridgewater could be sidelined for the entire 2017 and season. And then the, the implications for things like this, like you said, the, the decision has to be made because there's, there's multiple aspects to how it could change with as far as benching his contract and extending it all the way potentially into 2019 mm -hmm. if he's on the uh, physically unable to, to perform list. And then whether or not that'll get frozen or then he'll, if he comes back halfway through the season, there's all these options. And I read through the, the several potential scenarios two to three times. Yeah. And I'm not envious of the position you have to be in to decide these things. Yeah. So, you know, we get on, the people get um, frustrated with players and then also front office people for the decisions they have to make. These are tough decisions. And then I wonder to what degree they actually care about his potential future with the team or if no. they're just thinking, you have to predict. With football, no. it's such a prediction of, okay, is this knee gonna be okay? Yeah. Is he gonna be the same guy afterwards? Cause he's a, he's a He's the kind of guy that uses his legs well to perform behind the pocket. So when when you when you have to deal with all this, and then at the end of the day, Teddy Bridgewater is the one who's going to end up being the one being screwed. You can't do anything but go. I wish they would be able to change the rules. I, so I started reading other things about the reasons why, and we all know NFL contracts are not guaranteed. Yeah. To an extent, they are. A lot of times, there's money that they'll that they'll um, sign for, and they put it all up front. So that on the tail end of your, say, five, four or five year contract, you may not get any of that money. Yeah. And so when that happens, you wonder, you wish, and I don't think it's ever really gonna be able to happen, you wish they could at least guarantee more of someone's contract, if not all of it. Other sports have these guaranteed deals. And with a sport like football, man, look, look what just happened. Yeah. It's and now he, I think he's making with rookie minimums of 1.3, 1 1.25, 1.35 million dollars a year. Yeah. But if they, take more chances on him, it could jump up to over 12 million a year. So this is where I've never sugarcoated this. The contracts in American sports baffle me. Like it's just so hard to understand. Like at one point when you have uh, Steph Curry making less money in the yeah. NBA than yeah. uh, Val or whatever, Zaza Pachulia, you know, who's well, making more of yeah. these, whoever, who just recently signed for the Lakers and he signed a crazy contract. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You haven't seen him on the floor since. That's yes. What's that? Mozgov. Timothy Mozgov, yeah, that's it. So, uh, yeah, it's blanking with me. So that, that was uh, baffling to me. The NFL is even more complicated. Um, and I come from a, a background where guaranteed contracts are there. Mm -hmm. Like, you're guaranteed. So you sign a four-year deal, you're going to make this much a week. Mm -hmm. If you get injured, you're still making that money. They, the team can try and sell you, mm -hmm. or they can try and do whatever they can to try and remove you from the contract when you're healthy if they don't think it's working out. That's why players, more often than not, in, in my football, where they have the choice. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is having a phenomenal season at Manchester United, Real Madrid comes in and goes, you know what, I wanna sign you, you still got two years left in his contract, they just need to pay more money. And then they've, eventually they'll, they'll get the player that they want, it's and the player if he wants, world. yeah, if the player wants to leave, he'll leave. So, in a sport like the NFL, it's un, uh, injuries are such a high probability with such a physical sport. So, from the business side of it, NFL, the NFL, which is the most business oriented sport, in my opinion, in the world, they put business ahead of everything. That's why they hide concussions. That's why they do all this, <laughs> this, and this. Uh, it's, they will never change it. They will make sure that they're not gonna be screwed out of a contract if someone they sign up front goes and breaks the leg and then all of a sudden they're not gonna pay that guy for the next three years to work on his recuperation. So yeah. it, I, I wish they would, if they preserved the livelihood of the players and that was at the top of their priority, which on paper you're expecting the, the, the organization to do because who who attracts the fans? They're not coming to see Roger Goodell. No, they're coming to see these players. So if they get injured, they're doing they're getting injured trying to play the sport. I almost wish that we wouldn't. Um, I've said this before, and I don't know if it would even work. But I almost wish we didn't know the salaries of players. Yeah. 
um, and what contracts they sign for. Now, we know salaries of many business guys at the top of the game. We know what billionaires make and how much their business brings in every year. But we don't, I don't know John Smine's contract <laughs> on Wall Street who makes yeah. millions of dollars because I don't watch him run around on the field in front of me. Probably push but you off when you think yeah, about it. Yeah, but it's influential. And so then I get to assess what he does every day when he goes into the office and whether or not he skipped lunch that day. I was like, you know what, you're making $10 million a year. You better not eat lunch. So we, we, <laughs> we, take, we take it off because I would feel that way. We would take an opportunity to see these guys' contracts and it's always part of their argument whether or not they're performing the yep. right way. Now, we don't take into account whether or not they have herniated discs or if they got a knee issue that they've been continued, continually playing through because of the pressure of living up to a contract that isn't guaranteed. So the worry then becomes, from a fan's point of view, or maybe even from a front office point of view, that we can't guarantee money to these guys because they may start taking off days or they, mar they may have an injury, a significant yeah. one, and then milk it maybe further. And know they have two more years on a contract and they wanna make sure that they're playing at the top of the game then. The mentality of, of American football players already is that I'm gonna play hurt. Cause it's one of those things like, yeah, you're a man, you're a man. Yeah, your legs are halfway money. hanging yeah. off, play. It, it, the baseline is just to play for your teammates. Yeah. Not even about the money. But once you start thinking about it, this is your life yeah, on the exactly. line. You have a kid, you have a wife, you have, you're 32 years old and you want to uh, see 50. Yeah, you know it's true. And uh, whenever I know exactly those people that will say that, that will come out and criticize players for the amount of money they make, um, and be like, "Oh, you just broke your leg, get back out there. You're making 50 million a year." Exactly. Like, because they because they look at it as these guys are so entitled and they have a phenomenal opportunity, which a lot of them do. That's why I hate when people take advantage of it mm -hmm. and throw it away. But for the actual people that are out there busting their ass, like maybe just like a Teddy Bridgewater who's got his career ahead of him and now might suffer because he got injured, you gotta think to yourself, take away the, the stardom of it, take away the sport and think about JR and Francis are in TYT Network, I'm walking by, they're doing construction on a table, it falls and it breaks my leg. Do you think TYT are gonna cut my contract because they just <laughs> got me injured and I can't perform my daily duties? <laughs> It's, it's all part of the, they're not getting injured going out and doing something that's not related to the sport. Yeah. They're getting injured when they're trying to pursue a career in the sport that they're getting, that they've proven that they have an opportunity to go for. So yeah, it's a really complicated it's, issue. And it, it, it gives me a headache whenever I'm trying to de like find out the details of these contracts. And you're absolutely right on another point. We know every player's contract down to his last like, incentive. Oh, if Cam Newton only dances twice, he gets 80,000 in bonuses, you know? It's like we know every single yeah, detail. Yeah, and you have to play, there's parts of contracts you have to play 70, 80% of games in order to get your money already, yes. the parcel money that's already not guaranteed already. So then guys will play through injuries to be like, okay, I gotta stretch this out somehow. Mm -hmm. So the incentive is already on the side for them to do more than I feel, I personally feel they should um, in a sport like this. And then, I don't know, maybe the will the performance of the sport go down? It depends, yeah. not, not on a broad enough scale, because th these guys have committed their lives to this type of thing. And, and, and lastly, on this, we don't criticize how much money uh, the owners make in, these, in, in the stadium. And if they when, get injured, they're still making money. <laughs> when you go in and you pay $150 for a semi-bad seat, yes. and then you then pay $20 for a beer and $17 for a hot dog, and then your kid is there and you gotta get him some snacks and you've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars in one game. And what if your team sucks? I'm a Rams fan. <laughs> so what if then you, you're, you still have this huge conglomerate of people that are gonna come and still do it. But we're not going, you know how much money I just spent on this hot dog and this beer and this ticket? This owner better do something. No, yeah. we go, this guy better play better. That's that it. that broken leg. That's it. That's such a good point. Such a good point. And by the way, I've heard JR complain about this. It's shocking. This kid. And JR, don't you try and put it on white. You like candy as well. You've definitely been out there buying some Mike and Ike's or something like I'd that. I buy and the Sour Patch Kids for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us know what you think. Teddy Bridgewater seems to be in a, a difficult situation. And we'll see how things pan out. Decision will be made tomorrow. I see this clip's probably gone up today. So we'll know about it tomorrow. We'll maybe provide an update. Uh, hit us in the comment section below what you think. JR on Twitter and Instagram at JR Jackson. All of them. All of it. The blue check over yeah. here. Blue check all at Francis M. Maxwell. <laughs> all the same now. And I got the check returned, so <laughs> see you guys soon.